I have succumbed to the Zuiko 12 to 100 Pro lens. Will it make me a better photographer? We might find out by the end of this program. I cannot escape the impression that some photographers who are gear orientated think that a camera or a lens with the Pro tag will suddenly and magically improve their photography. Technically, perhaps, but that is not the end of the story because it is the person behind the camera that creates the picture. But the camera can only take it successfully if the photographer understands photography. I graduated from the 12 to 50 lens, but being a variable aperture zoom, I lost two stops between wide angle and telephoto, which is common with most zoom lenses designed for a modest budget. However, it performed excellently within its specification, but the 12 to 100, in addition to having greater magnification, maintains its widest aperture of f4 throughout its entire zoom range and has weather seals something that so far I have not tested. Consequently, it is heavier and possibly unsuitable for smaller and lighter cameras, but its engineering is second to none. After a few local test shots, I paid a visit to Gower, South Wales, using just the 12 to 100 with the OMD EM1 Mark II camera. All photographs are handheld, no filters, as I wanted to showcase the performance of the lens only. But some tweaks have been executed in Adobe Lightroom. I also walked for miles. Gower, perhaps better known as the Gower Peninsula, stretches westward from Swansea into the Bristol Channel. It is almost an island and has an air of independence, something that can be savoured away from weekends and holiday periods when it gets busy. Some reminders of its architectural past remain, such as lime kilns. Although the scars of its former mining activities are still in evidence, its stunning coastline are still a gift for any landscape photographer. The heavily indented cliffs of South Gower are of limestone, formed millions of years ago and weathered over the centuries into their current shapes, formerly secret haunts for prehistoric man and smugglers, and today seabirds and not least photographers seeking amazing images amidst the solitude of its natural beauty. Port Ainan was once busy with fishermen and a hangout for smugglers, but perhaps the seascape with the wow factor is Rossilly Bay, a huge expanse of sea and sand, bookended by Worms Head and Berry Holmes. It is worth staying a while, not only for the excursion to Worm's Head, but to experience an ever-changing seascape by a fast-moving tide. Take a look too at St Mary's Church, dating back to the 12th and 13th centuries, perfectly situated overlooking the bay and near to its god. Although I'm using a digital camera with a high-end specification, I use it in quite a modest way. Most of the time it was set to aperture priority. I walked for miles, so I didn't use a tripod, but due to the exceptional and brilliant lighting, the shutter speed was often shorter than one thousandth of a second at 200 ISO without compromising depth 
of field, something that Micro Four Thirds is better at than larger formats. I underexpose everything by a third of a stop and spot meter, as I never trust any kind of general metering. Although I save to raw, I set white balance to cloudy. I disobeyed the rules occasionally. The instructions warn against pointing the camera directly into the sunlight. Oh well, I live to tell the tale. The lens has survived the ordeal, even if I haven't. So, what am I going to do with my faithful 12-50 to 50 lens? Keep it. The 12 to 100 is much larger and heavier, but optically it provides greater flexibility, especially when hand holding with its constant aperture of f4 through to telephoto. Olympus have added an image stabilizer to the lens, which works in tandem with the camera stabilizer, offering the photographer even more flexibility in low light. Because of its extra weight, it is better suited ergonomically for OMD cameras. But even on my long walks over mountain and moorland, there remains a fair chance that I will sneakily switch back to the 12 to 50 for greater portability. Perhaps I should now invest in the 14 to 150 lens for my poor, weary limbs. However, no matter how excellent your gear or photo expertise, the landscape photographer has to work with weather, and it didn't always do the right thing. For this reason, I was unable to photograph to my own satisfaction Three Cliffs Bay, another Gower set piece. But there's always another day to look forward to, one day.